So I, I'd love for maybe you to wrap this up and talk about how do we balance out those things, the, the difference between when we're training, the, the high intensity we have on manipulating gear or a theoretical understanding of, of pressure and, and gas and gas properties against how do we check that our, our decision-making, our communication, um, right? The, the factors that go into our situational awareness, the way that we cooperate or don't cooperate with a team, how do we start to train that aspect of our diving? Um, as well as, and not to say that it's either or, as, yeah, as we're too. also training the technical side and the theoretical side. Um, I think the first step is recognizing that there is a cognitive thinking part to diving. Um, because if you don't accept that, you don't actively acknowledge that, then actually it's really difficult to make some improvements. Um, I, I put a framework together for a, a paper that I co-wrote and we were talking about how do, how do surgeons get successful outcomes in the theater? And we said, you know, most of the surgical training is around about technical skills. And we, we, we say surgeons are really good at what they do in a technical way. And, and I draw the parallels with, with the diving, just as you just said, you know, most of the training courses we have are about technical skill acquisition, buoyancy, trim, propulsion, using a rebreather, laying line, whatever, using a camera. Um, but we also pointed out there's context. So understanding that we're going to have context that shapes our performance as well. So it could be the physical environment. Um, that could be cold water, it could be high current, it could be limited visibility, it could be surface visibility issues as well. It could be about the task. Are we setting people, ourselves up for success or failure? And one of my, my sort of favorite ones here is, you know, something like a Discover Scuba Diver where you can have four students with you, but you have to have direct control of those. Well, I have two hands, four students. How does that work? Um, and so, you know, there are ways that we can make it easier to set ourselves up for success. Then there's a bit of randomness and luck. And then we've got these these non-technical skills that we need to focus on. So the first bit I would say is um, be as self-aware as you can be. Reflect on your own mindset, your own sort of um, what mood you're in. If, if you pitch up at the dive site, having just had a major argument with your wife uh, or your, your partner or your boyfriend, husband, whatever, um, you might think it's great. I can get in the water and I can get away from that surface stuff. It doesn't work like that. Not unless you're really good at partitioning your ideas and you can put it in a box and off you go. Um, so thinking about when you arrive at the site, what's going through my head? visualization, talk through what's going to happen on the dive as part of the brief. And so that helps people having, you know, lines in the sand of what our maximum runtime is going to be, what our maximum decompression is going to be, what our minimum gas is going to be, um, and putting parameters uh, to the team and agree them. So we have a standard for that dive. Um, and then that, that empowers people to call things out as part of the briefing stage. Um, get people to speak up and question and challenge. Because if you can get people to um, question things during the briefing stage, they're more likely to speak up during the execution phase as opposed to, right, no questions, brilliant. Let's get ready, get in the water. Well, yeah, actually, I had a question, but you've just shut me down. Um, and so the, the next bit is right at the end of the brief, say to people, we're going to have a debrief. We're going to talk about what went well on the dive and why. What, what do we need to improve on and how are we going to do it? So if we set people up before they get in the water to, to expect to do a debrief at the end, then they might pay a little bit more of attention than if you get out of the water and say, right, we're going to have a debrief. And everybody goes, oh, my God, what, what was it we, we saw? What, what were we supposed to pay attention to? Um, so you could have a generic setting things up and say we're going to have a debrief. Or you might turn around to your buddy and say, you know what? I want to focus on some particular skills. Can you give me some feedback on this? These are the particular areas that I'm weak in, and can you see whether or not I'm adjusting them? So you, as, as a teammate, you can set each other up. So we're going to do the dive, and just, I'm going to say, pay attention to what's going on around you, which, you know, people in the water, it's great. You just chill, you see stuff. And then when we finish the dive, going through a structured debrief, 
that allows you to create a psychologically safe environment. And there's a, a link I'll put in the show notes to the debrief guide, create psychological safety, and then talk about what I did well and why, what do I need to improve on and how am I going to do it? And your team member does the same thing. And then as a team, look at what did we as a team do well and why, and what do we need to improve on and how are we going to do it? And it's the why did it go well and how are we going to improve it are the important questions. Observations are easy. It's about being specific, being targeted. Oh, yeah, team communications was good. That's rubbish for learning. You can't replicate that. The fact that we swam along the side of the wreck and you held the torch beam in front of me so I could see you were there, that was good. Keep on doing that. That's a much more useful piece of feedback uh, than a generic, yeah, team communications was good. Um, and, and that, you know, then pick up the final part of the debrief is what do I need to change? What am I going to put forward? Um, what will I do uh, to improve things? And it's an iterative process. It's about doing something, you know, planning it, briefing it, executing it, debriefing it, reflect, create change, carry on doing the same thing. I should give everybody something well to said. work on. Very well said. Well, I, I feel like Gareth, uh, I could talk to you for hours about this. Um, there's so much that you, that you say, there's so much depth here to, to the topics that we're talking about. It's hard to, to pack it into an hour, right? So that's why uh, the human diver.com exists and the courses exist and so on and so forth. Um, that if you want to unpack more of this, which I highly, highly encourage from Gareth, um, there's the book, there's the human diver.com, there's the courses, there's so on and so forth. And not only that, there's talking with your scuba diving friends uh, yeah. and teammates and clubs and, and having these conversations that the bringing them out into the open. So it's not even a requirement to go through a course to start to practice no, some of these things, right? Um, and it's not a certification, read, right, Gareth? Oh, no, 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 not at all. And what I would say, <laughs> one, of the simple, <laughs> one of the simplest things you can do is if you go onto the human diver site, go up to the top, click on if only, which is where the documentary is, there's a workbook you can download from there and you can run a workshop at your dive center and your dive club with your buddies. And that will bring out a whole bunch of these human factors in your own diving as well. And it's a, it's almost a scripted little follow along thing. And, and it's a really powerful tool to get people to think about the diving they do and what they can do to improve it. 